Welcome to Life Club. This is George G. And the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful Drew Neiser. Drew, are you ready to do this? I am indeed. Thank you, George, for just doing your show. I'm excited to have you on. Drew is the founder and CEO of Renegade. They're an award-winning strategic boutique for B2B innovation and CMO huddles. He's also the author of CMO's Periodic Table, Renegade's Guide to Marketing, as well as Renegade Marketing, 12 Steps to Building Unbeatable B2B Brands. Drew, tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. <laughs> so on the personal front, I live in New York City with my wife and a French bulldog named Louis. Uh, we have two delightful grown-up kids who live over in Brooklyn. I'm a Ben Franklin fanatic. Uh, you've already mentioned I founded two companies. Um, all of this is fueled by the fact I'm a perennial student. I've interviewed over 500 chief marketing officers, and that's been the fuel that's enabled me to write the books, do the podcast, write the articles, and even start CMO huddles and do my coaching. So uh, it's, it's good to be a student. Nice. Well, amen to that. Do you have a favorite Ben Franklin book? Uh, well, look, uh, there's, he's been written about more than any founding father. There's hundreds and hundreds of books. And interestingly, PBS has a new series coming out on him, Ken Burns documentary. Oh, so, nice. uh, you know, I, I recommend his autobiography for anybody. It is the great sort of American Horatio Alger story of, you know, rags to riches. Nice. Well, I appreciate that. I will check that out. I'm excited about the, uh, the, the documentary. So, all right. What, as 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 we continue to to grow and evolve as human beings and we incorporate and have technology thrust upon us and we are a business trying to market to other businesses how are how are you thinking about what was uh, maybe what was the motivation for for the new book what was it that jumped off the page that said i i really need to write this yeah and and appreciate you asking that because that it Sometimes my first book I wrote because I could. This book I wrote because I had to. And that was, I noticed that B2B marketing had gotten ridiculously complicated. And I just had the audacity to think I could help radically <laughs> simplify it. And so started with a, just an outline of it, went on a road show, talked to a bunch of CMOs, kept interviewing CMOs, ultimately came up with the 12 steps and the CATS framework, which will probably be a helpful part of, of what we talk about next. Nice. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. it's. Is it a surprise that we like to just layer on additional complexity on top of complexity? It, it is, and it's simple as hard. I mean, it really is. It's hard to strip away, um, you know, and the first part of this CATS framework is courageous strategy. And it takes courage to say no. It takes courage to have focus. Uh, it takes courage to be unique. I mean, just think about yourself in seventh grade. I mean, you weren't going to be the guy. I mean, I was the guy who wore, uh, I'm going to date myself, earth <laughs> shoes and bell bottoms, but that made me unique. And that was scary. It was a scary place to be. Yeah, well, it, it, it's true. It, it, it's, we don't want to stand out. In fact, probably that's, that's, that's probably a genetic thing because if we're an outlier, then bad things happen to us. Yeah. Yeah. The cave bear will come and get us. Yes. Right. True. All right. So it requires, it requires courage for us to be ourselves, but then also to, to say the emperor has no clothes. We are, we're, we're doing too much and it's unnecessary. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, the, I like to think of it with everything else, uh, you know, with cats, there's four things, courageous, artful, thoughtful, and scientific. But when it comes to strategy, you got to narrow things down. You can't be all things to all people. Uh, I mean, uh, Peter Drucker said the definition of strategy is knowing what you say no to. So if we start there and we say, okay, we, we're going to dare to be distinct. We are going to dare. What does that mean? Well, it means as an individual, like I only wear this color shirt on my podcast. That's it. This is it. You want to find, I'm the guy I'm wearing this shirt. Why? Well, because it works with the background because it's part of the brand colors that we promote. It's a little thing. It's a little thing, but those little things add up. And whether you're a big company or a small company, you've got to decide what are sort of the signature items of your brand. And that again, takes courage. Well, this guy wants this and this guy wants that. No, 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 I'm sorry. And I, there's a story I tell of a construction company in my book that decided to focus only on hallways and uh, for co-ops and condos. That's it. 
Hmm. They gave up 30% of their business in order to do that. But now they win 70% of the time. They're included in every one of their bids. And when I asked him, was this hard at first? He goes, yeah, it was really hard because we had to turn business down. But now it's easy because everybody calls us for hallways. And they have a higher profit margin. I mean, it's so it can be painful to fire your bad customers. It can be painful to focus, uh, but it's ultimately, it's just so rewarding. And again, that's the courage thing, right? To, to That's actually... the courage thing. Yeah. And then it takes courage to sort of commit to a purpose. I talk about purpose in the business, but I talk about it both in terms of big purpose, big P purpose, save the world and little P purposes. Just what are you doing? It doesn't have to be save the world. Like we're just making hallways better, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? That's all. That's our purpose. We help co-op, co-ops and condos to repair their hallways. Cool. That's a good purpose. It's clear. It's succinct. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, let, let's just continue along, uh, along your framework, the artful piece. What does that mean? So there's several little components, but I, I don't care whether you're an in- entrepreneur or part of a company, you first have to recognize that you can't do much alone. <laughs> you got it. You, you got to welcome we, and that's the first part of artful ideation. You might say, "Wait, what's artful about that?" It is artful to be able to get other people to come to consensus around a single idea. I mean, one of the things I love Ben Franklin for is he did a zillion. He's credited with a zillion things, but at the time, he tried to get other people credited for it. He didn't want to because he kind of knew. Well, if every one of these things, from the fire department to the library <laughs> to the to the university, they think it's from me, they're going to start to hate me. So, but you don't need to get the credit. And so, artful ideation is about welcoming we. It's about perfecting pithy as I go long here, and it's about delighting with design. And I, I want to ma- emphasize that a lot of entrepreneurs forget about design. They just slap up a website and design matters because design communicates, are you going to be easy to work with or hard to work with? And it's just a question of if I go to your website, and it takes me five clicks to find what I want. You're going to be hard to work with. Hmm. So oh. artful is thinking about this world out there beyond yourself and helping them achieve their goals. I love it. And I, it seems to me that that also, as you are figuring out what your path to distinction is going to be, there's a lot of potentially cooks in the kitchen, but somebody does need to make a decision. And so being artful and helping to get consensus just internally within your organization seems to be uh, essential. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that because a couple of stories in the book refer to CMOs who said, from the day one, I got the idea, and it didn't work, and it didn't work because they hadn't built consensus around it. I mean, one of the things that I recommend that's so easy that a lot of CMOs don't do is do an employee survey, get their opinion at the very beginning, the first thing you do when you arrive on the job. Find out what they think. Are they proud of the company that they work for? Are they proud of the marketing? You, it takes maybe 10 minutes to set up the survey. I've written it in the book. And when you do that, you set up the opportunity to get consensus without, look, there's no great ideas that are bought by committee. There's no doubt about that. But if you make people believe they are part of the process, at least they'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, yeah, that's well said. You know, I, it, that's that's literally a lesson I just, I, I, I've known for a long time, but then I forgot it with uh, my kids and it smacked me in the face when I made a decision about things and they thought it sucked. So <laughs> having a two-year-old dig their heels in on something is not a pretty thing. No, it is not. Yeah. <laughs> I've often wondered how the cat's framework would work with as a parental guide. Uh, and, uh, but uh, I think there's some aspects to it that, that can work. And I, I think this next part is, which is the thoughtful execution. Um, if you, we think about our execution, the things that we do to help our companies go forward, often we say, what's our sales pitch? What's the message? Who's our target? Instead of saying, how do we help them? Start there. How do we help? And so the whole purpose of calling this whole section on execution thoughtful is about, okay, so a two-year-old, what's they want? <laughs> Let's start there. Mm-hmm. And then we'll get to what you want. Um, but if you start where they are and you help them, whatever their 
short-term problem is chances are you'll get the audience that you want. Yeah, I think that's really well said. And it goes back to, to really simplifying things again and being courageous enough to say, yeah, we could come up with this brilliant solution with all these different layers of intricacy and everything else. But why don't we just figure out, number one, what the people within our organization are looking for, and then the people that we're serving help figure out what they want. And if we're able to do that, well, then it's probably going to be easy, easier. Yeah. I, I mean, I think there's sometimes in some categories where they don't know they need this yet mm. and you're creating a category and that's a little bit harder because you sort of have to help them see the problem that they didn't even know they had so sometimes you're selling where you're the only it's like they either buy you or they don't buy anything and in those cases again if you and this is part of what i've learned from interviewing cmos and why i recommend doing interviewing anybody should be interviewing if you interview 25 people in your target audience, by the time you're done with those 25 people, you will know more about their tar or their business than almost anybody. It's amazing. And so then you can give them 10 things that they probably didn't even, that they knew about their business or didn't know about their business. And by giving that information to them, then you have a chance to say, oh, you're right. This is a problem. Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah. I'd, thank you. Okay. That was valuable. Now, what is it that you're selling? <laughs> Yeah, that's fascinating. What popped into my head was, it, it would if if you were to 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 build a widget, would you want your widget to be just a, a solution in a marketplace that already existed, or to be solving problems that the customer didn't know that they had? Yeah, it's it's a tricky thing. I mean, and and sometimes customers don't know how to articulate the problem. Yeah. Right? I think I have this problem. Or I didn't even know I could fix this. Oh, that's amazing. And that's where this, this technology comes in. But I want to get at one other thing here that I think is important, which is one of the reasons why I can call the book Renegade Marketing is it flips targeting on its just completely upside down. Most companies say, how are we going to attract new business? They talk about prospects first. Everything is, will this work to attract new business? And in the book, I talk about, no, 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 employees first. That's the first target audience. If they don't buy whatever your new message is, it will fail, period, end of story. Second target, customers. If they don't buy your new story, they won't. You know, If they don't believe that's them, that this is helping them, that they'll reinforce it, this is somehow good for them, you're done. So you know, I always like to think about marketing as employees, customers, and then prospects. And if you do the job right against employees, you could probably stop there. I know several companies that, like one company, insurance company, happy employees equal happy customers. That's their marketing. Mm. And then, you know, you could keep going and just say, all right, well, it's really about customers. And so we're going to just do everything we can to celebrate our customers. Again, none of this is rock and scientists, but it takes courage to say, stop talking about prospects. We haven't nailed it with employees yet. Yeah. No, I think that, that makes a ton of sense. So. Drew, I wrote down the S, but I can't read my handwriting. Ah, well, so that gets us to scientific <laughs> method. And here's the thing. You can be courageous, and, and that's awesome. You can create this distinctive brand. You can be artful in the way you build consensus around the idea and how you execute it. You can be thoughtful in the way you reach all these people. But if you don't have some metrics in place, you're going to fail. And it doesn't even matter whether it's a personal thing or a professional thing. On a personal level, if you don't put metrics, you're just one of those Oh, I got to do more. I got to do more. I got to, you don't get yourself a set, a moment to say, I did this. <laughs> I'm not saying you stop, but at least you can pat yourself on the back and say, I accomplished something. Uh, and I think that's important. I think we have to have a little self gratitude. And, and so having the scientific method, and then this is the exciting part about the scientific method. Once you've started measuring whatever it is that you need to do, that your boss will believe or your CFO will believe that marketing can contribute. Then you get to move to the fun stuff. And the, the last chapter in the book is called Test to Triumph. And to me, that's the most exciting part about marketing is you can always be take, testing something. Take 20% of your budget, try two or three things, agree with the CFO how you're going to measure those, and off you go. And, and that's what makes marketing just, just an infinitely interesting profession. I love it. With, a, I guess, a stereotype of creative people is that they resist 
tracking. They resist probably filling out spreadsheets and, 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 and tracking numbers. Uh, do you find that that's true? So I think every you know great creative person wants to get from here to there. They're solving problems. And so where is there? And, and it, I think the notion that certain things aren't measurable is true, but I think you can create a lot of directional metrics that will help the, even the most creative person see the work that they did had an impact, right? It increased awareness. It increased say, understanding of the business. It drove more site traffic. It uh, allowed uh, the CEO, when he went to a hotel, suddenly they, somebody knew their company name or you know the anecdotal things where a salesperson said, God, you know, the last 10 people I called knew who we were. So there are, and in the book, I create all sorts of surrogate metrics that you can use to measure what matters. Uh, and they're not necessarily expensive either, but you got to have something in place. Otherwise, how do you justify your existence if you're an employee in a marketing department? Yeah. Yeah. There certainly is that. <laughs> <I> appreciate it. <laughs> well, Drew, the people are ready for that difference making tip. What do you have for them? Well, we live in this give to get economy. And whether you like it or not, if you want someone's attention, you have to give something of value. And I'm going to add another layer onto that. Whenever I've been stuck and worried about the future, and I'll say March 2020 as an example, I looked at the 2020 as an agency owner and said, oh, God, here we go. Another recession. How is this going to work? Are we going to survive? Is everybody going to cut budgets? And instead of saying, oh, we got to cut a staff or anything, I said, all right. The formula here is, who can I help? And so I went out to a bunch of CMOs and said, hey, how are you doing? How's this going? And would you like to meet with other CMOs? And I started CMO huddles like two weeks after the pandemic shutdown as a way, I had no idea where it would go, but I knew the spirit was right, that it was a give to get, that somehow or other, if I helped them through it, there'd be a payback. And it turned out it was a new company called CMO Huddles, and we now have over 100 subscribers. So if you keep that give to get right here, no matter what the crises or situation, you, you'll have a great place to start from. Well, I think that that is great stuff that definitely gets, come on. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's, I think that that's incredible. I'm, and, and thank you for sharing that story. I was really curious about that CMO huddles and how it came to be. And I see immense value and I'm glad that that's uh, taken off. So beautiful. Well, Drew, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you? How can they connect with you? Where can they get a copy of Renegade Marketing, 12 Steps to Building an Unbeatable B2B Brand? Uh, so that's on Amazon, audio, paperback, hardcover, ebook, whatever. Uh, you can find me on renegade.com. And if any of your listeners want a chapter of the book, um, they just hit me up on LinkedIn. Uh, it's Drew Neiser on, on LinkedIn, and I'm happy to share uh, a copy of the book. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed this much as I did, show Drew your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas. Find him at renegade.com. Find Drew Neiser. D-R-E-W-N-E-I-S-S-E-R -S -S -E on LinkedIn and also pick up a copy of Renegade Marketing, 12 Steps to Building Unbeatable B2B Brands wherever you buy your books, certainly Amazon. Thanks again, Drew. Thank you, George. Thank you. And until next time, keep fighting the good fight. We are all in this together. <laughs>